after the big Bethesda acquisition by Microsoft and now continued murmurs of other possible game studios and publishers being absorbed by Microsoft slash Xbox. The question now looms, if these things go through as rumored, is Microsoft and Xbox gearing up to take over gaming? And if so, what does that mean? Let's get into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another episode of The Medicine. Can you do me a huge favor before we get to this one? Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the reason. And y'all know the slogan. I am not too proud to ask. Uh, let's get into it. All right. So we already know about the big Bethesda acquisition. Well, really, it's not uh, uh, Bethesda. Zenimax Online, uh, Microsoft has acquired them. They are still like standalone in a lot of ways. They are going to partner with Xbox, though, to bring their Bethesda games, their published games, their developed games, all that stuff to Game Pass day one. Now, I've seen a lot of murmurs on the internet about how Microsoft didn't spend $7.5 billion on Zenimax Online just to let their stuff still be multiplied that all this stuff is eventually going to become um exclusive and then i've also had discussions behind the scenes where people doubt that orion the cloud proprietary software that they're working on that they're baking into engines that will make cloud gaming for the games that have orion baked into their engine um move faster and operate better with less bandwidth they all people now are doubting if orion is going to be licensed out as it normally as it originally was planned to be before this whole acquisition and here's the thing and this ties into the whole theme here of xbox taking over and what i mean by taking over i don't think you guys have the as my homie top dog told z uh i don't think you guys have the mental fortitude to understand the dynamics that are going on here and the reason why a lot of you guys don't understand is because y'all ain't done y'all ho your homework y'all be all up in these forums all up in these podcasts Y'all don't do y'all due diligence. Y'all don't do y'all research. Y'all don't look at the analytics. Y'all don't look at the data. Y'all don't look at the people that are in charge. I got one title for you. T-H-M-F-I-C. What does that stand for? That stands for the head mf -er in charge. And the T-H-M-F-I-C is Satya Nadella. Satya Nadella is the reason why you're seeing all these big deals right now. Only three years after becoming the CEO of Microsoft, did this man pretty much single-handedly change the whole culture of the company and raise the stock up 170% in three years. In this business sector that he's in, that's unheard of in this current climate, especially with the financial woes that we've been seeing over the last decade. He's done it. Now, with all that said, cloud gaming was his motif. I told y'all and I had urged y'all to go to PaulTheRot.com. See, y'all didn't know who Paul Therot was before last year. I tried to educate you on who the man was and how much of an insider him and Brad Sams were back in the day but y'all didn't want to listen with the whole terry myerson thing nonetheless y'all are starting to come around so utilize the knowledge while it's still out there okay i urge y'all to go in there and understand that paul Therot educated us and let us know that satya went to every business sector and told them asked them first and foremost why should you exist not just my not uh, not just xbox every business sector he said why should you exist and secondly he said how can we integrate the cloud and what you're doing day to day? And if you didn't answer those questions favorably, you eventually got purged. Phil answered those questions favorably and Phil put Satya's plan into motion. 
and Xbox has made more money than it ever has, despite all the grumblings about his gaming content. Now, all while this is happening, Satya Nadella is spearheading big deals, Havoc, Minecraft, and the likes, right? And all those are deals, not for exclusive content to Xbox, because they're everywhere, but to help bolster, as far as when it comes to Xbox, they help bolster its premier product and service, which is Game Pass. You get Minecraft Dungeons and anything Xbox related day and date and Game Pass. We'll let you enjoy it on multiple platforms, but you get the best deal out of it if you get it out of Game Pass, if you come to us solely for it. We'll let you enjoy it elsewhere because we're still gonna make money. That's Satya's mind state. And that was Satya's mind state, I feel, in buying and absorbing Zenimax instead of just trying to take Bethesda away from them and dissolving Zenimax all the, he didn't try to do that. He absorbs Zenimax because Zenimax has an eye and a great way of managing talent. They got over 2,300 employees. And with those 2,300 employees, they have brought together groundbreaking, not only groundbreaking game development, but groundbreaking uh, breaking tech in VR. And now Orion with the cloud. And all those deals were being licensed and set up to be multi-platform deals. And in this acquisition, Phil, along with Satya at the helm, told you, we pretty much leaving Zenimax alone. Now, we might have a case-by-case -case basis where said game may be exclusive or may not be exclusive. The big, trust me, the big ticket games are going to be everywhere. The Elder Scrolls and all this stuff, they're going to be everywhere. They're not silly. They're going to make money. That's what this deal is all about. But believe you me, they are also going to leverage Zenimax to help develop exclusive content for Xbox, or maybe there might be time exclusivity, but the big ticket games that are going to make money everywhere, they will be everywhere. And one of those ways that they could be everywhere is, and think, listen to this, I say the first three or four years, maybe even five years, you're going to see these games on every platform as is. It's going to be business as usual. An industry term is BAU for business as usual. Everything's going to be BAU. But maybe around the three, four, five year mark, you might start seeing more and more of these games become exclusive to Game Pass and xCloud. And I see a world where Satya Nadella, again, he don't play the console wars. He don't care about something being exclusive to a piece of plastic. He doesn't care about that. But what he may say is, hey, you want to play that latest Elder Scrolls? You got to play it via Game Pass and xCloud. But we'll allow Game Pass and xCloud on your PlayStation. Sony just got to sign up for it. We're all for it. We'll stream it. Or you can get Game Pass on your dedicated device if you want. You know what I'm saying? But that's how you're going to have to get it. And you sign up for a Microsoft account in order to do it. Now, I see that type of gangster move ha happening. Where, again, they don't force you to buy a piece of hardware because they don't care about the hardware aspect of it. But I see Microsoft under Satya pulling a gangster move saying, look, you got to get this through Game Pass either via natively when you download it or you can get it through xCloud whatever xCloud retail name is going to be you can stream it to your, your PlayStation we'll allow it, Sony just got to allow it to we're willing to do it and when it comes to games like Elder Scrolls or whatever the people are going to and Sony is going to be forced into a situation to say yes they're going to have to say yes so again when it comes to this, to Game Pass, xCloud, Orion, just like Havoc and Minecraft, they are not going to sit there and lose opportunities to make money. They have showed you this, what did Cindy Lopez say back in the 80s? Time after time, 
that have showed you this time after time. They are here to make money. Do not believe that the 7.5 billion was spent to search to satisfy your urge in the console war. They don't care that you got an Xbox hat and a tramp stamp of Aaron Greenberg on your on your on your inner thigh. They don't care about that. <laughs> they care about making money. And that's why I say they're buying up services, critical services, like uh, uh, Orion. That's critical. If you can make every single game a cloud gaming platform, whether it's a competitor or not, if they got to license the technology to make it speedy and use less bandwidth, and they got to come through you to get that, that they'll be happy with that. They're not gonna, they're not gonna uh, strangle hold and choke off money. So again. With all this, I just want y'all to think big picture. Think of the industry. And when you think uh, something's going to happen a certain way, you need to think what? T-H-M-F-I-C. Which is who? Sachi and Adela. And that's it from your boy, MM2K. And yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below. Like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the broadband bullies. PNTS Network, Hard Knock di Digital Culture, and yes, the Stadia Dosage. And again, if you did like the content, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications. So select all so you can get all the notifications, please, so you know when we drop in these doses. And with that said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.